Woman's final Manic Monday is coming to a close, and for the most part, it didn't disappoint. The most anticipated match of the day, Coco Golf vs. Angie Kerber, was a battle between the youngest and oldest players remaining in the women's draw. Here, experience prevailed as Kerber eliminated Golf 6-4-6-4 to reach her fifth woman in quarterfinal. The match began with five consecutive breaks as players needed ample time to adjust to the win. Kerber was the first player to hold serve, and she kept her serve for the remainder of the opener to take it in 33 minutes. In those earlier games, Coco was a bit tight whenever she broke, and Kerber with the greater experience took advantage of her opportunities better. That was a major factor in the outcome because in the second set, Goff had chances to break Kerber, having a break point at 1 love, being up 30 love at 1 2, and having two break chances at 3 4. Giving credit to Angie though, she knew how to play the bigger points better. This matchup was always going to be tough for Coco as the German gets a lot more balls back in play, which requires even greater shot tolerance. I think Golf looking to come forward was a good play because it's very difficult to beat Kerber from the baseline. However, the execution has to be on point and when you approach, you have to respect the Kerber backhand pass, which Golf didn't really do. I believe Coco played a good match, but once again, this matchup was very different for her as her prior opponents played quite differently. Coco's forehand though did let her down a bit, making a lot more unforced errors on that wing. Even though I say that Angel makes a lot of balls, she isn't necessarily a pusher because she plays her best when being offensive and moving her opponent around, which is what she did today. Her angles were truly exquisite, further putting her in the best core positioning. People have been saying that three weeks ago, Kerber wouldn't have been a pick to make it this far, as she hadn't reached a major quarterfinal since winning here in 2018. However, watching her play on clay this season, her game did seem a bit better, and I know that she always excels on grass as it complements her game very well. She is very flat and is rewarded by it here, the ball skating and going through the court more. Of course, the bot on title helped her confidence, as she's currently riding a 9-match win streak. Up next for Kerber is Carolina Muhova, who defeated Paula Badosa today 7-6-6-4. The Chuck woman was an expected pick to reach the quarters here because not only has she done very well this season, reaching the semis at Melbourne, but she had her first breakthrough here two years ago at SW19 making the quarters. Another Chuck woman into the last eight is Carolina Pliskova, who's been the best player of the tournament thus far, now beating Lumila Samsonova 6-2-6-3 to make her maiden quarterfinal at Wimbledon. Samsonova was actually riding an 8-match win streak, winning the Berlin title last week. However, Pliskova was too strong for the Russian, whose serve got her through big time. Carolina has been struggling in the majors for a while, this being her first slam quarterfinal since the 2019 Australian Open. She'll be the favorite in her match tomorrow versus Victoria Goyevich, who took out Madison Key 7-6-6-3. Goyevich, who had never made it past the third round at a major, played a great match, hitting 28 winners to just 9 on forced. This run isn't totally shocking as the Swiss woman had a solid showing at East Horn last week, beating countrywoman Benchich. She's never been in the top 50 before, but might make her debut on Monday, being 47th in the live WT rankings. Meanwhile, in one of the earlier matches, Trailblazer Anshabur makes even more history after defeating Iga Svantec 5-7-6-1-6-1 in the round of 16. Jabur is the first Arab or North African man or woman to reach the women in quarterfinals in 47 years. Ans did well to fight back and recover in this match after losing her 5-3 lead in the first set. However, in the second set she didn't let up when leading, breaking the pole twice to start, then ultimately taking it without hassle. Jabur continued to take advantage of Svantec's subpar serving and got the job done in an hour and 41. The Tunisians run the tournament has been incredible, now beating a third consecutive slam champ and V Garbinye and now Iga. Although Ans have been playing very well recently, also picking up a title in Birmingham this season, Svantec was the favorite because she looked very dominant in her opening three matches. She touched on it a bit in her post-match presser saying, Tennis is a bit frustrating. You can have a great week, but then lose and forget that you had a nice tournament. I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to see how much I learned and how I was feeling even before round one. Like winning just one match was a great achievement for me. Meanwhile, Ans talked about how the Tunisian support she's received helped push her through today. Tunisians are everywhere, I got to say, she laughed afterwards. They were singing actually a football song. I felt the need to sing with them also. I felt so happy that I wanted to hear more. I was doing this to hear them. It's amazing to hear, even playing against an amazing player, Iga, but most of the crowd were helping me and supporting me. I was hearing more of my name. It gives me a lot of confidence. Honestly, I appreciate it a lot. I hope they come even more for the next match. 
That next match will be against Arna Sabalenka, who finally makes that elusive slam quarterfinal, beating Alana Rabakina 6-3, 4-6-6-3. The match featuring great power tennis from both had a bit of controversy too. While Rabakina was serving at love 130 all, she hit an ace which was caught out. However, Hawkeye showed that it was in, but the umpire made the two replay the point, saying that Sabalenka made contact with the ball. Sabalenka, showing good sportsmanship, told the umpire that she did not touch the ball, but he still stood his ground, which upset Elena, rightfully so. She told the chair, you're taking the point away from me. You're taking the point away from me for no reason. If I break the racket, I'm going to get fined. And you, are you going to get fined for this? Thankfully, Elena won the game anyways, but it wasn't enough to get by the second seed, who said afterwards that in the final game, she almost cried because she felt everything was going well, being a few points away from her first personal goal in the slams. She calmed down though and remembered that this isn't the final and there's still matches to be played ahead. I think this would be the biggest match of both Ons and Arna's careers thus far, both going for their first slam semifinals. This would be their first meeting and I think the Ons will have to incorporate more variety like she did against Muguruza because it'll be impossible to out hit the Belarusian. Both are playing great tennis so I think it'll come down to whoever handles the pressure points best. Ons has already played a slam quarterfinal, so that's an advantage to her. However, as we unfortunately saw with the Muguruza match, nerves can play a significant role for her too. Going back all the way to the top of the draw, Ash Barty continues to advance without dropping a set, beating Roland Garros champ Barbara Krajcikova 7-5-6-3. Barbara was up 4-3, 40-15 in the first, but started to play a bit messy, letting Barty back in. That proved to be the turning point of the match, as Barty carried the momentum shift all the way to the end, snapping the Czech woman's 15-match win streak. I want to give props to Krajcikova because she did well to even reach the second week here, after having to adjust to being a slam champ so quickly and also never playing a main draw match at Wimbledon prior to this event. However, Barty, being the world's best, knew how to find a way once more despite not playing her best. She summed this up perfectly saying afterwards, that was a tough match. Barbora has had an incredible year. I'm just happy to come through in the end. I found some pretty good stuff when I needed it most, which is great. When asked who she wanted to face next in the quarters between compatriot Ayla Tamjanovic and young Brit Emma Radukanu, she apologized to the crowd and said that she'd be pulling for her countrywoman to take the W. Barty will have been pleased with the results as Ayla advanced to the quarters after Radukanu retired down 6-4-3 love. This match was actually very, very good and the Brit had two big opportunities in the first set, having two great chances at 4 all. Then in the following game, Emma had three game points to even it, but Ayla managed to battle through and break to take the opener. Early in the second set, Emma appeared to struggle physically, pulling at her side a bit. It appeared that she pulled or tore an ab muscle, which explains her rapid breathing. I actually had the same thing happen to me last week, and I couldn't really breathe either. After seeing a trainer while down 3 love, she ultimately pulled the plug, sending Tamjanovic into her first major quarterfinal. It is unfortunate that Emma was unable to finish the match on her own terms, but she still had an incredible tournament. Raducanu, who was ranked 338th in the world before this tournament, will leave ranked inside the top 190 and now has three top 100 wins to her name. I feel like this was a long time coming for Isla because everyone has always talked about how she's had the game to beat the best but can never really put the pieces together after her breakout season in 2014. The 75th ranked player talked about her long journey to this point remarking, as for the quarterfinal I wouldn't say that I didn't believe in my career that I would ever get it but just the way my season was. The year before I had a lot of heartbreaking moments where I thought this was my week against Simona Garbine Sloan a long time ago. All of a sudden, everything felt really far from me, even though I did feel like I'm playing well, just because mentally those matches took a little bit of a toll. It got to me a little bit, it got in my head, but I had to put my head down and keep working and not think about those matches, think in a positive way. It's not easy. So coming to Wilburton, I was thinking really, really small steps. First round. I will be honest, I don't think I'm going into the matches thinking I'm going to win. I'm just going in thinking if I take care of myself and what I can do, I have a really good shot. It's been getting me through into the quarters, so I'm not changing anything. Barty will likely be the big favorite in this match with Isla having greater experience, but I wouldn't count out the 28 year old as she's played excellent this fortnight. This match will actually be the first time two Aussie women met head to head in the quarterfinals at any slam since 1980. Isla's boyfriend Matteo Berrettini is also into his first women in quarterfinals, dominating Ivashka 6-4, 6-3, He actually now meets Felix Oje Aliasim who is dating Isla's cousin. Felix's win was very big, closing out Zverev 6-4, 7-6, 3-6, 3-6, 6-4 to reach its first major quarterfinal. 
Felix was able to recover from 4-2 down in both sets to claim the 2 love advantage, also getting some help from Zverev, who served 12 double faults in the first two sets alone. There was a bit of a momentum shift early in the third when Zverev fell, which I believe made the Canadian lose focus. After driving those next two sets, I know Felix was having flashbacks to the Australian Open this year, where he blew a 2 sets to love lead against Karatsev in the 4th round. Ali Asim though fought the demons and got the job done in 4 hours, which includes the 20-ish minute rain delay. In his on-court interview, Felix got a little sentimental with the crowd, saying, I'm a normal guy from Montreal, Canada, and here I am, court one, packed, Wimbledon. Truly the best win of my life so far, like nothing I've ever experienced before. Thank you so much for living this moment with me. Felix's compatriot and friend Denis Shapovalov joins him in the last eight here, after dispatching Roberto Bautista Gu 6-1-6-3-7-5. When Dennis is on, he's very tough to beat, and he definitely was firing today, hitting 52 winners to just 41 unforced. When talking about his performance today, Dennis said, I played some really high level tennis today. I got a little bit nervous in the third set, but that is totally normal, and I dealt with that really well. I played flawlessly, and I'm super happy with myself. To beat a player like Bautista Guten Straits backs up my level from my match against Andy. I am happy. I feel like I am improving every single match. I knew it was going to be a process on the surface to really develop my game on it. I've always loved playing on it, it's just about getting comfortable. Top of all off, next meets Karen Hatchinoff, who outlasted birthday. Their boy Sebastian Corda, 3664635718, in a bizarre fourth round encounter. Just in the final set, there was a total of 13 breaks, which is rarely heard of on the men's tour. I think fatigue and nerves played a big role in why the two struggled to hold. This was a big match for both. It'd be Sebastian's first them quarterfinal and Karen's first them quarter since 2019 after a rough past few seasons. Karen Ung successfully served for the match three times and had a match point in one of those games, but couldn't close. Finally though, in the 18th game of the decider, the Russian held out love to reach his first quarterfinals at FW19. Compatriot Andrei Rublev though wouldn't join him, falling to Marchand Fuksovich 6-3-4-6-4-6-6 love 6-3. Marchand had never beaten Andrei in a main draw tour level match, Rublev winning all of their five prior matches. Fuksovic even told Andre that he hoped he'd never play him anymore this year. This time around though, the 48th ranked player got the job done, besting the Russian in 2 hours and 41 minutes. Fuksovic, who is 5-11 on the grass heading into Wimbledon, picks up his second top 10 win. His first came over another Russian player, Daniil Medvedev, at the 2020 French Open first round. This is probably his biggest win to date though, becoming the first Hungarian man to reach a slam quarter since 1981. Things surely won't get easier for Martin, who now gets Novak Djokovic, the Serb dominating Chilean Christian Guerin 6-2-6-4-6-2. Novak is now the fifth player in the open air to reach 50 major quarterfinals, joining Federer, Everett, Serena, and Navratilova. Meanwhile, Roger Federer also makes history, becoming the oldest man to reach a slam quarterfinal in the open era at 39. He defeated Lorenzo Sanego 7-5-6-4-6-2 for his 18th woman in quarter. The match was highly contested early on, Lorenzo recovering from a 5-3 deficit to reel off 11 consecutive points, going up 5 all 40 love. He couldn't close that game out and during it, the rain came, which only helped Roger with the roof being closed. Federer's opponent in the next round is to be determined, as the new Medvedev and Hubert Hercoc have their match suspended while in the middle of the fourth. This obviously plays to Roger's advantage, as the winner of either match won't have the full two days to recover. In his on-court interview, Federer said that both guys were young and could recover, then joked that he'd hoped that it'd rain tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, that medvedev Herkoc match will be first on center court, followed by Jabir Sabalenka and Barty Tomjanovic. Then on court one, Pliskova and Kerber headline action. That's all for my Medic Monday recap, and let me know in the comments how you feel about the golf Kerber match, Felix's breakthrough, the quarter hatching off break fest, and other results. Also, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell, so you're notified whenever I post new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.